Good to know you're still with us. If you're just joining us, you're welcome. You're still in time uh, for the newspaper headlines. We call it Af the Press. Uh, we have joining us to look at these headlines is legal practitioner Libora Soshoma. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. All right, we're going to be kicking off with uh, stories on the Vanguard newspaper, the lead one here, of course, uh, talking about restructuring. Uh, there's also stor uh, stories uh, that uh, try to go across the country with regards to the uh, ban on uh, uh, the special anti-robbery squad. So kicking off with the Vanguard um, restructuring, uh, gov governor's lament say system not working. Also, in Southern Kaduna crisis, a ploy to exterminate Muslims in the area. IGP warns SARS boss, uh, commis uh, coli commissioners of police, sorry, and others over misconduct of operatives. Economy, other sectors suffer as uh, debt servicing surges. It says also as debt se uh, service to revenue ratio hits 72%. Analysts and IMF paint picture of threat. Um, one or two others also on the Vanguard newspapers this morning. Um, it says transporters and their trucks stranded for many days due to the deplorable condition of the Mina Zungeru Road in Niger State. Uh, bandits sack 500 farmers in Katsina State. That's also one of the stories on the Vanguard newspapers this morning. Um, I'm going to bring in uh, Libra Sashoma here to quickly share his thoughts. Uh, yeah, um, if you look at... Uh the headlines these days um, it's obvious that um, you know there are more no matter how how much you try to look for the positives in nigeria it's ov obvious that there are more negatives and so you can't uh, create or fabricate positives that are not there bandit sack farmers roads are bad and then um, government insists we can't restructure you can't force us to restructure despite the fact that the campaign on the plank of restructuring to come into office. For me, that's fraud. That's the biggest fraud ever. You know, when you make campaign promises and you fail to keep them, or you try to now find a way around it. Um, if you remember, if we go down memory lane a little bit, um, General Agui Ronson was killed for unifying this country. Um, but today, people who criticized that move, why will you unify you know, a country that is as diverse as Nigeria, are running this country under the same unitary system of government, cloaked you know, in borrowed federal ropes. Uh, and so when I hear government says, we will not, we cannot be browbeated into doing this. It is not about browbeating you. If you remember, even the pre-1960 constitution, also, um, the pre-Republican um, 1963 Constitution, the debates, the, what generated a lot of debate about those constitutions was the fears of the minorities that eventually led to the Willings Commission. And so, with all of this, there has always been that fear created by the... That was why some, some people wanted the inclusion of um, the right to secede in those constitutions. So, if years later, 60 years down the line, those fears that led to the creation of regional government, we have, you know, suddenly, you know, realized that, no, nobody should talk about those fears. Yet, we're doing those same things that we didn't even do that led to those fears. And then you expect, you, you tell me, the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. How about the What you're gradually doing, sorry, quickly, what you're gradually doing is you're pushing the unity of Nigeria to us, the brinks, and it, it might. How, how about the committee that was set up? You know, headed by exactly. the governor of Kaduna State. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that that committee, just like NSAS, it was to placate the agitations. Oh yes, we are doing something. All the right. Committee came up with a report till date. Have you heard anything about that report, or did you even see it at all as a pressman? A government that is ready to actually assuage the fears of the people, set up a committee, and the committee came up with a report. Even the governors, as, as um, same in the headline, are saying that the present structure is currently not working. The vice president made similar statements, 
the Secretary to the Government of the Federation made similar statement. The way there are so many, you know, disagreement and discontent, and there are so many cracks if not addressed. And but when you pretend not to understand the meaning of restructure, it's the same thing. NSAS in the same headlines. People are saying anytime you you see one problem with us is that after this now we'll go to sleep on the NSAS issue. Okay, uh, let, let's let's uh, put it in perspective with this one. Uh, the Nigerian Tribune is full of a lot of stories uh, this uh, morning. Uh, of course, beginning with the SARS issue, they're putting it this way: SARS banned fourth time in four years, and then you have police violations of human rights, unacceptable, annoying. Uh, that's the vice president speaking. And Delta victim not shot by SARS didn't die. Kayamu. Um, a representative of the uh, federal government uh, as well. Let's start off the conversation from there and then we'll go look at other headlines. Yeah, it's um, first and foremost is unfortunate. Um, I don't expect Keamu, versus Keamu, the Minister for State for Labour, to even be talking at this time. He's no just matter, clarifying. No matter issues. the clarification, no matter the clarification he has at this time considering what he represents before now and now that he's in government. That clarification will be drowned in the problems. I expect more from him. On even the vice president, everybody is saying this impunity can't continue. And so it's like when you bring up those kind of clarification against the tide of the moment, it's like you're trying to defend the indefensible. You shouldn't even be making such utterances. After, you know, the government is seen to, to have done something. Not just so we are banned SARS. You ban, you unban, you ban. They, and they you weren't ban. actually banned because what the IGP said was they are an integral part of the police operations and that for now they are banned from roadblocks. Uh, it is not so and searching how, victims. How do and you all of how that. do you so that wouldn't be said to be a ban? How it? do you how do you perform your function if you do not patrol? The question, the issue is not patrolling. Look, police as presently constituted is garbage in, garbage out. You're talking about SARS. Do you know what the average Nigerian go through in the hands of the ordinary policeman daily? These are no SARS. Sometimes the average policeman, you see him dress like an arm robber, behave like one. And so why? Because the police is not attractive to the best of us. So what you have is a system that is um, very unattractive, and you have you know, the worst of us in those places. And so for somebody that joined the police, you look at the police training college. What's, the police training college is worse than prison. Recently, there was a viral video of a cadet who was being hit on the head. Oh, you want to be a cadet? You want to be a, a man or a young boy who came out from such training? What kind of mentality do you expect from him? You know, so it is not a question of NSACs. It's a question of a complete reformation and reorientation of the Nigerian police structure. But Otherwise, we have the police act now. How does that, um, do you see an implementation that could help, you know, address some of these issues? Because we had the conversation with not, uh, uh, Sega Links uh, earlier this morning. A problem is not lack of laws, but the weep power to implement the law. Look at everybody complaining. Oh, we won't take this. Oh, the uh, uh, situation where the police will violate human rights. The vice president also complaining, lamenting, like, you know, like an ordinary citizen. We don't, nobody wants to hear complain. What people want to hear are the fact that the government has taken step. Everybody or those that have been involved in such impunity, as we speak, some are on their way to court, some have been arrested, and the parents of the victim, of the relations, have been, there's something on board to compensate them after thorough investigation. Those are the kind of statements I, I should be hearing for, from uh, Fessor Skiamo also, as a learned senior advocate. And not, oh, the man didn't die, SARS didn't kill him, or I didn't die, and all of that. There is impunity going on in the land that people can just come. Somebody, yesterday, somebody was telling me, he said, look, sir, sometimes he, he is scared for my life. That because you can criticize a governor who is in, in Sokoto, and then the next day you are in Lagos, police will come, or DSS will come pick you from here, and the DSS here or the police here will not even be, that, be aware. We've seen cases where people are arrested. Police will deny that it's not in their custody. 
We've seen cases where police, not SARS now, will kill you know, innocent Nigerians. So all of this, the question is, what is the government doing? What is the value? Well, life the conversation to, to, continues to, on that one. Uh, before government. we move on to the next paper, let me just quickly scan through uh, some of the uh, screamers here. Just underneath uh, the SARS band, fourth time in four years, we have the story of the housewife killing her two children um, in Kanu. Uh, we also have pastor murdered in Ekiti. Uh, scores injured as APC PDP supporters clash in Akure. Uh, these are the, some of the headlines that you see uh, on the front page. And just underneath that picture of a very bad road situation. We have the Sanu Nasu Sanu command strike today. The Peng Pengasin direct members in Chevron to shut down operations. And then above the top, uh, master of the paper, we have how FG states lost 1.5 trillion naira to acid strike since 1999. That's uh, an investigative piece. I think you want to say something. Could do that in 30 yeah, seconds. What I, can... no, basically, what I'm saying is the same thing I said before. Running through the papers, housewife killed too, pastor murdered, bad roads, scores um, uh, injured in APC PDP rally. Uh, state of bad road, Sanu comment strike, and all of that. You you struggle to find something good in the news. So as a Nigerian, you wake up, you pick up the newspaper, and with all of this happening around you, will you be happy? And so I ask myself, the government of the day, what do they think? How do they go to bed with all of this happening around? And then you're still struggling. You say, no, report positive. Where are the positive to report? Create positive, and the press will report positive. All right. We will need to move to the punch newspapers next. Uh, there's one of the stories here that, uh, of course, is talking about the vice president uh, saying that uh, there's no, almost no difference between uh, police officers and armed robbers. It says Nigerians don't know the difference between policemen and armed robbers. Um, also on the punch, uh, one of the stories here, it says travelers must bear full cost of COVID-19 test, and also banks shouldn't uh, lend to states without our approval, says the FRC. IPPIS, varsities, and senior staff begin 14-day warning strike today. Other stories, uh, PDP lacks a moral authority to query Buhari, says the APC. And um, retired general says only state police can deliver Nigeria from sinking. Outrage grows over SARS menace, uh, Oshibanjo and others uh, uh, condemn killings, arrest, and extortion. And one or two others, uh, our complete all projects abandoned by Amosun says at Biodun Undo APC and the PDP exchange words as their supporters clash again. It's a few days to the Undo state elections, uh, by the way. Um, a woman bathes uh, made with hot water for licking baby's milk. Brother Shom, over to you. <sighs> Um, it's, it's sad that government will campaign on the plank of change. And then you come on board, you say, oh, look, you know, any time you are queried for not doing it the way you promised to do it during campaigns, you said, after all, PDP did it that way. You know, it's as if, it's almost as if you are benchmarking yourself against failure. Because the failure of PDP once we point to your failure also, you say, no, PDP did it that same way. So why should I do it differently? And then Nigerians are not saying this. And then you turn around and say, okay, yeah, because you were there and you didn't do it well, you have no moral right to query me. Then what's their sense of opposition? You, you know? So that's why I tell people, look at over the weekend, you saw Atiku's um, son's wedding to Ribadu's daughter. And you know, the who is who in PDP and APC were all there. These people are not quarreling. You are the ones that are in opposition. Look at um, the, the NSARS. You never hear that one rich man's son or daughter was harassed by SARS because a phone call away would, would, would let him or her off the hook. The bad roads, they don't travel. These people don't travel. They fly. And so it is you that will go through the same road. And so you look at it. Now, elections are around the corner. Some people in Ondo, some people will create enemies you know, amongst themselves, over the same politician. One of the candidates was in uh, APC as a deputy governor, yeah. and then moved to PDP, now to Zenith yeah. Party or whatever. And 
He's still the deputy governor. You think that they are quarreling after the elections, they won't sit down to settle. You know, so we need to sit down as Nigerians and actually ask ourselves, what do we want from government? The vice president still complaining about the fact that, oh yes, that um, um, SARS, you know, I was an arm robbers and you are the vice president. So right. what would you do differently? Don't complain to me. You know, you are put in charge, in authority to do something. So we want to see I think you one, do something. One would actually look at it as empathy. He's trying to, you know, um, share the feeling. So we know they are not immune. If, I mean, if somebody, uh, something happens to somebody, even before you start to make an effort, isn't it fair that uh, you, you show some, you know... Felicity, um, something happened to somebody, you come, you share tears with the person, and then you walk home go about your normal duty. That's not empathy. You are s supposed to be in authority. It's like, you know, somebody is, um, somebody is kidnapped, and then the DPO comes and says, oh, the way kidnapping is happening in this, my, you know, division now, you know, one is wondering if the kidnappers are taking over, you know, the division. And then you say the DPO is empathizing with the victim. All right. I expect, you know, because before now, what you hear is, we're on top of the situation, go about your normal duty, and the, the corporate will be dead decisively with until the next happens. But now, they, because people are tired of that, so now you hear them you know, complain like the rest of us. All right, The Guardian has uh, quite a number of interesting headlines. We'll start with the pictures on your screen, hopefully. Um, if we can put it up. Okay, let's start with the anxiety over fresh strategy uh, to end insurgency. Details on page two. Um, the picture on the front page uh, of uh, U.S. President Donald Trump and other leaders that have contracted COVID-19 re-emphasizes to us that um, the virus is still here. It's not gone. Um, I see reports. Um, I don't know if um, you also see these reports where people no longer seem to be wearing face masks or um, engaging in social distancing. I hope this picture reiterates that it doesn't matter who you are. COVID-19 will get to you if you don't take your ne necessary uh, precaution. I mean, these men are the top of their breed, <laughs> wouldn't you say? If you permit me for Donald Trump's uh, COVID uh, uh, positive tests, I have my, I have my, but that does not, you know, underscore the fact that, you know, COVID is real. You know, I have people who have died, you know, of COVID, close, close friends. And then, but for Donald Trump's uh, issue, how come Donald Trump all of a sudden when the debates are here, after the first debate, before it comes out of isolation, the debates would have been over. And then you, anyway, well, that's a discussion, for, that that's a discussion for another day. Um, but really, the issues you raised, it's, you know, it's almost as if you know, we have defeated COVID in Nigeria. So everything is normal, apart from those who are traveling in and out of the international airport. That's when you would have to go through. And then the, the, the horror uh, picture of um, our travelers. You know, this, the, the, the crisis they had to go through. Some are even extorted. And then the, God, the um, um, Secretary of the Government of the Federation coming out to say you will bear the cost. It is not the cost that is the problem. It is the attitude of these workers, the health workers, airport workers, and the rest. So when these issues are raised, what has the government done to ensure that, you know, sanctions, appropriate sanctions are melted out to those that are involved? And then... If you look at um, the uh, page four, uh, water resource bill dead on arrival. I, I do not understand why we as a people, you sit down, you, we, we, like, we, are, we like to copy. It is so bad that we copy almost everything. I even learned that we copy our national flag from somewhere. But a situation, you, if you want to copy, copy and then adapt. You say you want to manage water resources. You've not been able to provide water for your people. You say any water that runs across two states. But there are smaller streams. I can give you an example. For a lot of people that travel from Benin to from Lagos through Ore to Benin, there's a village you call Ohosu and Ofosu. Ohosu is in um, Ondo state. Ofosu is in Edo state. There's a small stream that is separated by a bridge across these two villages. So by the provisions of that water bill, water resource bill, that stream will belong to federal government. 
And so the bank of that stream will belong to the federal government. And yet, you have not been able to provide water for these people. You now want to manage that water. And also, if you look at the provisions of the Land Use Act, that bill runs contrary to the provisions of the Land Use Act. So yeah. I sometimes wonder why we would not we would sit down and copy and, um, and, 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 and not um, you know, adapt to our peculiarity. And then quickly, lastly, I like the fact that some churches also, a pastor Adeboya had added his, his voice, that we either restructure or break up. And like I said before, it is either, because gradually, for those of, of them in government that are making this, you know, what's restructuring? The structure as presently constituted, it's not working. Yeah. Find another way around it. And then you say, no, I don't want to. What you're gradually doing is if you make peaceful change inevitable, you're going to make violent change, you know. All right. Uh, uh, so we're, go we're going to go back to uh, talking um, um, news uh, stories. Uh, moving on to the uh, Daily Sun, uh, the lead story there says the IGP cuts SARS wings. Bans squad uh, tactical teams from stop and search patrol. Um, Oshimbajo, Nigerians uh, hail action. Uh, security experts uh, experts react. Also, Adeboye laments uh, rising debt profile and uh, decayed infrastructure across the country. Restructure Nigeria now says uh, says Governor Fayemi. Under gubernatorial elections, tension in Akure's thugs take over streets and uh, shoot sporadically. The presidency should go to the southeast in 2023, says Ndwese Essien, an ex-minister. Also on the Daily Sun, food scarcity looms in the southeast overhead men's attacks, as Setu says. Um, these are the major ones that we have on the Daily Sun. Yeah, uh, quickly for oh, lack of time, um, this <laughs> IGP caught sax wings and then everybody is happy. And, and, and I, I laugh because... This same, this has been a recurrent decima. How have you caught their wings? By saying you ban patrols and the rest, and they will still patrol. I mind you, I can tell you this authoritatively. Between now and next week, Monday, you will hear that police had killed one innocent Nigeria. As I speak to you, not even SAS, the ordinary policemen, on Mondays, ask every young man you see. On Mondays, they are positioned around banks. They see a young man coming out from the bank. Once you sag and you're not properly dressed, they search your phone. Oh, maybe you've gone to collect a Western Union. You are Yahoo, Yahoo. You know, so for uh, a society... We're out of time. I really want to chip in quickly and say that how does how one dress now constitute... Is there no freedom of self-expression, how you put on your clothes? Must that be Then, Then the policeman that is harassing you is dressed like a criminal. The only difference is that he's carrying a gun. And then quickly food scarcity loans, this headsman crisis that we have refused to address. You remove Fulani headsman because the president is a Fulani man, and then we gradually wish that it will go away. Very soon, there will be no food for the rest of us in the city because the farmers in the interior have been driven away from their farms. All right, thank All you right. very much, uh, Liberos Oshoma, for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My pleasure. We'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back.